Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Good evening, uh, evening uh, blah, 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 afternoon, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose from the Road with your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide and servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa Brian Post. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Just uh, shooting through the very warm 100 degree temperatures of, uh, is this considered Central California? I mean, right outside of Oroville, just left Gridley. And then back to Chico. I think at one point my car was registering like 108 um, outside. So anyway, I saw that I had signal. I saw that it was post daily dose time. And I figured I'd just pull over here and chop it up with you guys for just a little bit. So here's the thing. Our subject topic episode matter of the day is school in the age of COVID keep getting a lot of questions about this. I have a lot of parents who have a lot of concerns. I have a lot of teachers who have a lot of concerns. No one knows what to do. Everyone's up in arms. Everyone is stressed out and everyone is concerned. And here's the thing. Hello there, Tammy. Hello there, Mimi. So what does Big Papa think about school in the age of COVID? I don't think it's a good idea. And let me tell you why. I wonder if you guys could surmise that I wouldn't think it's a good idea. School is stressful by itself. School with mask is impossible. I can hardly stand a mask for 10 minutes in the store and out of the store. Expecting kids to wear masks all day. Kids, much less teachers, to wear masks all day to prevent a virus is unrealistic and I think it is ultimately going to be demoralizing and it is going to be really stressful. I do not think it is a good idea. I think that if given the options, as challenging as it is and may be, you should look at homeschooling options, maybe look at homeschooling co-ops where there can be small group very small group gatherings of children and the education can take part outside it can take part at community centers it can take part in gyms it can take part you know in fields it can take part in churches it can take part in all number of places where there's where there's space and it can be broken up into very short segments of time i i think it is just absolutely realist unrealistic to send children to school in these environments. And I know I have so many parents that have children at home and have to work and have to do all those kinds of things. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to do whatever is, is in the best interest of your family and in the best interest of your situation. But I can do the only thing that I know to do, like I always am with you guys, and just be honest about my opinion. In times of stress, our thinking is confused and distorted and our short-term memory is suppressed. That's the fundamental reason that most kids struggle in school anyway, because they are stressed and their short-term memory is shut down and they're not thinking clearly. So what happens when you you put mask in there and then you put a fear of having to you know keep your keep your distance and and you from small children up to adolescents and you already know when you start telling adolescents what to do they're not going to do it and so then you're going to have these incidences of of children not abiding by the rules and then what's the school going to have to do kick them out send them home you know i i just it's just not a good idea it's not well thought through what i would really encourage schools to do is to figure out how you can best support even I mean, I've even got, I've got families who are teachers. I've got one of my families, both the mom and the dad are the teachers, and they have to try to teach via Zoom, and, and they're encountering those challenges. And in bigger cities, um, in California, you know, there's a contingent of children who don't have 
the stability of parents in the home. They don't have the stability of food and bills and and uh, bills paid and and um, you know love and and security. So there's a whole nother level of challenges for those children. And then what do schools do then? Oh, thank you so much, Cynthia. Hello, Tracy from PA. I hope you get some much cooler weather. There's Cynthia making it rain on Big Papa today. Thank you for those 200 stars. And who was that? Someone shot me 200 stars yesterday, right at the end, right as I was pushing the end. I saw that pop up. Mm, I can't. Mm, I know it's a huge one of my one of my regular viewers. So I just wanted to let you know I saw that. But um, so one of the big questions that parents have is, okay, if my kids aren't in school, how do they socialize? Okay. So first of all, children. The socialization of children, and this is a myth and misconception of how children socialize. Children do not learn healthy socialization skills by playing with other kids. Children learn healthy socialization skills by having healthy interactions with adults and their parents. So that's very important. You know, we have to break that misconception that kids playing is how they learn to socialize. That is not true. They learn to socialize. Their primary socialization happens in the home, happens in the relationships with the adults in their home. And then when the children are regulated, they can learn much healthy, so much healthier socialization skills. I've got a teenager right now who, because of her anxiety, her socialization skills are really poor, and especially if you put electronics in her hand. And so during the time that I've been spending with her, the socialization happens obviously through our interactions with one another, but the teaching of socialization happens intermittently. Every now and then I'll just drop a pearl on her about it takes five seconds to form an opinion. And that opinion can be a lifelong opinion. And so when you meet someone for the first time, it's really important, you know, that you look at them and that you not, don't look at your phone and that you feel good and feel secure. Done. End of conversation. That's the lesson. And, and I will say to her, and I have said to her, here's something that's going to follow you for the rest of your life. And then I'll, boom, drop a pearl on her. You know, no real real conversations, but I have to get her regulated, I have to get her anxiety down, and I have to drop a seed of education that she can use and process and think about that she'll carry with her for, you know, the end of times. Hello there, Kirsten from the Netherlands, and hello there, Stefan, as well. So don't be, don't be compelled to push your child into school because you're fear of them not socializing. Bring a friend over, okay? So here's, here's the thing. It's just the weirdest thing, right? We want to we want to put all these kids in school with masks even though there's a really really low percentage of that actually pre preventing a a virus, the spread of a virus. But we want to put all these kids in school but we don't we won't we don't want to have them, you know, having play dates. Have a play date. Have a kid over. One kid you know, and, and let them play out on the, on the, on the jungle gyms or let them go swimming, get your socialization in that way. And that's much better socialization than groups. Anyway, the, the interaction of pure physiology is the same physiology as stress. So when a bunch of kids are together, they're all stressed out. So they're not learning effectively anyway. So do one-on-one -on -one play, you know, set up small group, small group opportunities with your children. And then you can teach your children effectively Find out the best way that they learn. Let's just pray to the good Lord that this is a short-term situation that we're going through, that eventually this virus will wear itself out, will develop Im immunities to it. Maybe there will be some kind of immunization, which I'm not crazy about that. I'm not going to go in that conversation with you. But maybe our bodies will start to develop some kind of immunities, and we can start to fight it naturally without people dying. So that's, that's like the big thing. Hello there, Connie from Canada. And hello there, Sue. So... Let's just keep praying that this is a short-term situation. It's not going to be long-term. A, a missed year of school, a missed couple semesters of school is not going to be a detriment to your children's cognitive development. Your children are smart. It's not a cognitive, it's not a cognitive struggle we have anyway with kids. It's an emotional struggle. You get your kids regulated, 
they'll learn effectively. They will, they will, their learning will go into hyper mode if you get them regulated, if you get them to where they're not so stressed out all the time. We put way too much focus on school, and I don't even know why. I really don't know why. I love all my teachers. But school is just not, not the answer. There's so much more that can be done outside of a classroom than inside of a classroom. And especially one-on-one, one-on-two, one-on-three, as opposed to one-on-thirty. So that's my opinion. Hope that's helpful for some of you. Gives you just something to think about, something to process, something to not feel so guilty and ashamed and nervous and anxious about. I don't want any of that for any of you. I want you to be able to approach each day in a calm loving, understanding manner, and just keep working on your stuff, keep working on your issues, keep breathing, and keep stepping into the next day. Remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from the same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, or we can stop, we can slow down, take three to ten deep breaths, and choose love. And I hope you will choose love in every possible moment and when you choose fear because fear takes over because that may be more dominant that's okay don't judge yourself don't shame yourself take your deep breaths think about it review it and figure out how you can do something different and with that james my friend my dear dear very handsome little friend big papa loves you buddy big papa loves all of you god bless you have a fantastic evening we'll see you tomorrow